next is to outlying counties that uh, don't have the capacity that we will have with this new building. So it, it was an exciting tour. It, uh, they use a lot of natural light. There are all these um, new equipment uh, that have been installed and it's just really spectacular. So I wanna publicly thank uh, Coroner Shamarco for having us out and uh, look forward to the ribbon cutting probably at the beginning of next year. So thank you. And thank you to, uh, to all, outlying said, counties all that uh, don't have the that we will have uh, on with this new building. I think we all so it, it was an exciting it. tour. It, uh, they so use a lot that, of natural light. Um, there are all Eric, these, we are um, going to go to you. So we have got a report uh, that have been installed. And it's just really spectacular. Auto license so I want to publicly so thank thank you for uh, sending this Corner information Marco in for having us out. The first two and uh, look forward this to the ribbon cutting is being probably at the beginning of next year. An increase to the And thank you to outline. Counties that, that, uh, that uh, don't have the capacity that we will have with this new building. So it, it was an exciting tour. It, uh, they use so a lot of natural um, light. Um, all Eric, these, we are um, going to go to you. Uh, so we have a report uh, that have been um, installed. And and it's just really spectacular. So license I want to publicly yeah, so thank thank you for sending this corner to Marco for having us out. And look forward to the ribbon cutting being probably at the beginning of next year. An increase. So thank you. And thank you to all outlying counties that don't have the capacity. That we will have with this new building. That, so it, it was an exciting was tour. It, uh, to they use a lot of natural right light. Um, Eric, all these, we are um, going to go to you. you. So we can. That is why this is in front of us today, and we are getting an update here. So, Eric, I'm very grateful. I, I do want to recognize that this work was started under Ted Hubbard, who was the previous en engineer and now is being carried forward by Eric Beck. So, Eric, I'm going to turn it over to you. Well, thank you, Madam Commissioner. You've uh, summarized it very well. Um, um, I can go into as much detail or as little as you wish. Um, we typically bring forward to the board annually in the spring, the entire bridge list, which with the bridge map, with the current conditions of each bridge. As you stated, this was the additional $5 license plate fee that was passed um, to kind of show where we stand with what we had projected at that time for improvements and what we actually did. Um, the table there, table number one, shows what our actual revenues were and the increases um, were, were shown because of that additional $5 fee. So, you know, 2020 has kind of been a little of anomaly with everything. So not sure where that will end up with 2020. Uh, table two uh, shows you our entire bridge program that we did in 2019. The ones at the, the first uh, six bridges on that list were ones that were identified for this 10-year CIP program uh, and, and the status of, of what where those are. Um, one thing I, I would like to explain, if, if you'll indulge me, is bridges in uh, the state of Ohio defines a bridge as any structure that's 10 foot or larger crossing either water or a roadway. Um, that, that exceeds the federal standard, which is a 20 foot span. Mm -hmm. uh, the feds required uh, inspections every two years. The state of Ohio requires them every year. So we have one person that's tasked to totally do bridge inspections every year. So we basically start in the spring and visit all of our bridges annually and put those together and submit those to the state um, as our inspection and update our bridge map accordingly. Uh, bridges are rated from a zero to a nine, a nine being a new bridge, zero being a closed bridge. Um, so as we inspect those every year, um, the priorities change a little bit. They adjust because one year we may have uh, heavy rainfalls that cause erosion at an abutment and that would make a bridge worse conditions. Therefore, we have to kind of, kind of change the bridge priorities based on those annual inspections. So sometimes these lists, the 10 year CIP list for bridge, for bridges is difficult to maintain because so many things change, uh, weather being a large factor in, in how bridges act because of the, typically they're over water and then water does what mother nature wants it to do and finds the, the easiest path. So, while we did have that 10 year CIP, we have stuck pretty close to it. That what we did in 2019 was very close to what we had projected to do. 
Um, the ones that didn't get done just got moved to 2020. And those are shown on table three. Mm -hmm. um, we have some pictures there of some of the bridges that we did that we've replaced. Uh, Raglan Road being uh, was a Ford, which was basically some pipes in the in in the creek, mm -hmm. which uh, allowed at high water the water to run right over the road. We've replaced that with a bigger structure, and uh, anticipate no more water across the road at, on that road, um, which was a, a great improvement. Uh, Keller Road, we replaced the superstructure and, and reinforced the abutments. That's the one in Indian Hill. Um, as I say, table three shows the 2020, what we're currently working on now. We had uh, three bridges identified there. Um, two of them are engineering only this year, so they will, they've slid back to next year for construction, and we will continue to move forward with that. And as you stated, half of the money was in, it was to be set aside for the Western Hills Viaduct. Our budget department took half of the revenues and for the past two years, it's just under 2 million. It's like a million 950 and a million 800 a thousand, I believe. So it's just under $2 million that we've set aside in a fund um, that's that's will be there when we're ready to go to construction on the viaduct or use it to pay off debt on bonds if that's the way we end up going to finance the Western Hills Viaduct. So that that pretty much summarizes what I gave you and, and where we stand on those uh, those 10-year uh, CIP projects. We will continue to monitor those and uh, update you annually on where we stand on those. Hopefully we'll do it again in the spring. I know we're a little bit late this year because of COVID. So hopefully February or March we can give a, a another update. Thanks, you. Thanks, Eric. Can you remember how many structurally deficient bridges there are in Hamilton County? I do not know the, that number off the top of my head, but okay. I'll, I'll, we have quite a few of them, yes. <laughs> That's my recollection as well. Uh, yeah. yeah, and I, I remember when we talked about this fee, really it's a user fee because it is on license plates. And so the folks That's that correct. use the roads and bridges are the ones paying for the um, mm -hmm the improvements to the roads and bridges. So we felt like it was a fair way to try to improve the infrastructure throughout the county. Uh, so with that, um, any uh, comments or questions, commissioners? Thank you, Madam President. Um, thank you, Eric, for all that you guys are doing. Um, just in general, Eric, I know OKI just allocated a substantial amount for Western Hills Viaduct. Do you remember that amount when I went to the, o when I listened to the OKI meeting? For what, last week, um, the the applications that were approved last week by the uh, the board were we had applied for six million dollars and they they granted only one million dollars to the western mm -hmm. hills viaduct mm -hmm. yeah so, i noticed that a lot of those entities have been reduced but we understand correct. that but we were happy for the million so correct yeah we, we took a bigger reduction than the other jurisdictions mm -hmm. but Okay. Um, we're still a little bit further out from construction mm -hmm. than some of the other projects. Okay. Thank you. That's all I have, Madam President. Thank you. Commissioner Parks? Well, I have no questions other than thank you, Eric. You're welcome. Yeah, thank you for the update, Gary. I think it's really important that we get continuous updates as to how this work is progressing. So let's move right into then item number two, which is the update on the Western Hills Viaduct project. Um, this is a good news, bad news story, I think, Eric, because I think the good news is that the local match by uh, the city and the county are in place, but we have not gotten the support that we were hoping for from the federal government related to infrastructure. And so we have not been able to make as much forward progress as we had hoped for. However, there is some good news by way of pro progress. So can you bring us in the loop on that? Absolutely. Um... As far as funding goes, we keep chipping away little by little. Um, I did sit in a debrief with the infra grant, and I believe the reason we didn't really get funding this past year is because the transit tax had not been passed yet. It was in our application as a funding source for the structure, but it hadn't been passed yet. So I think the feds didn't kind of dismiss that as being a viable funding source since it was actually out in front of the voters. Mm -hmm. So we're hoping that that next year, since that has passed and is is in motion now, that that the next time we apply, we will 
we should move up the list quite a bit. So that, that's where we stand with the funding. We, we keep chipping away. Um, current estimates, what, 320 million for the structure. We're, we've secured about $118 million to date. So we're, we're getting there. Mm -hmm. We're chipping away at it um, with these monies that we're setting aside. Uh, if we go to the bond market, depending on the method we use to go ahead and, and build this project, uh, we should be in good shape, you know, in the near future to be able to move forward with construction. Right now, we continue to work on the design. Um, we've submitted our alternate evaluation report to the Ohio Department of Transportation. Final report, I believe, is being submitted to them today after some back and forth. Um, we have the recommend. We had previously uh, chosen the alignment, and now that the AER selects the actual type of structure that will be going in, and there are a number of things that have been considered on that. Is the main one being constructability, because we're working over so many active rail lines there in the in the CSX yard that uh, constructability is the biggest thing. We need a, a structure that we can work above the railroads and not on the ground. So. And, They've, the, the selection is, is recommending an extra dosed type bridge, which is, is a, it's a new type, not a new type, but we have not seen one in our area. It's a, it's a modified girder, steel girder that is part truss and part girder. So it, it will help span the, the rail yard and make constructability a little bit easier. So we're about 10% complete on design. Uh, once this AER is approved by ODOT, um, full-fledged design will move forward. Um, Right-of-way funding is 100% is funded currently, and uh, the city of Cincinnati has already started on the property acquisitions. Um, the, the Duke substation relocation is moving forward. We've worked uh, quite a bit with them, um, saved quite a bit of money to the project by working with them. They're, they will be picking up the cost to relocate their, their substation the project will be picking up the cost now for the relocation of the transmission towers that are in the rail yard. So that, that saved, I would say about $30 million to the overall project cost mm -hmm. that Duke will be picking up now to help them on, on their end. ODOT is uh, com come on board with their work with the I-75 interchange. Um, the I-75 interchange needs to be built by ODOT for our project to tie into with the correct alignment. So they have applied for track funds to do the, in to do the design work for that. Um, I'm not sure what the, the status of the track funds are yet. Uh, I don't believe they've uh, put out their list. So once that, that's completed, ODOT will be working on design. They've been the last six to nine months very uh, cooperative with us, participating in, in getting this design, both designs to mesh completely so that when construction moves forward, there we don't run into any snags. Um, the other thing is City of Cincinnati Department of Transportation Engineering is uh, going to be putting netting up on the bottom of the upper deck, prevent any debris from falling on the lower deck. Uh, that is uh, been approved by city council and i'm not sure when the bids are going forward but the bid documents are being uh, are completed and that's that's getting ready to go to bid so that is all i have on the uh, the viaduct kind of give you you know the the down and dirty as to where we stand today thanks eric um can you tell us how it is going with csx and the operators of the rail yard below the bridge Sure, we, we've meet with CSX probably every six weeks. Our design team has been meeting with them regularly. Um, our design has, has shifted due to some requirements they have. They've been willing to make some um, accommodations to allow us to put two piers in the yard, which you know, reduces the span length, which reduces the overall cost. So they have been working with us. The biggest problem is will be during construction when we're trying to work next to and above active rail lines. Um, that will be the biggest biggest issue at that time. We are work, trying to work with them so that we can 
eliminate as much as possible any of those conflicts. So by working with them in the design end, we, we hopefully will save time and money on the construction end. Okay, thank you. Um, commissioners, comments, questions? I have no questions or comments, thank you. No questions, thank you. Thank you. Um, yeah, so Eric, one other question then for myself. So as far as timeline goes, because the community is always asking, you know, what is the timeline here as a, you know, the bridge literally is falling apart, um, yes. it, which is the reason we have to put up netting so that the concrete doesn't fall on vehicles that are driving over the Western Hills Viaduct. So it's always been a fairly emergent project from our perspective. Again, you know, we was hoping that we could get uh, some of those significant dollars from the federal government it just hasn't happened yet. So what um, is the timeline here if we were to not see that kind of federal support and had to go out ourselves and bond out the financing for this project? I believe if we move that way, it, it's probably start construction in 2025. Um, we'll start doing some of the approach work in 2023. Obviously, if we can get more money, we can move that up. We're also looking at alternate project delivery methods as opposed to the traditional design bid build where we could do some sort of um, CGCM contract I, I, I'm sorry, I don't know what the acronym it means. It's it's new to me. I, I just learned about it about two weeks ago. It's where the the design firm and the contractor work in coordination to do the design and and the construction. Uh, it's it's not a design build, but it's it's a different method for that. And we're looking into that with ODOT in the city of Cincinnati to find out the legalities and in which jurisdiction could possibly do that type of approach. But if we did something like that, it could move the, the actual physical start of the construction up by as much as three to four years. Hmm. So again, the, the, the financing drives the timing, but the timing also drives the financing. So remind us, as this project moves forward and as a build starts, it, it's my, my recollection that this will be going on, the other bridge will still be available. That's correct. This, this bit bridge is south of the existing structure. The existing Western Hills Viaduct will re remain in service until the new one is completed. And then that cost that we the 325 million does not include the cost of the demolition of the existing one so we haven't really moved towards just figuring out a plan for the demolition of the existing structure at this point but the new one once the new one goes online then traffic will come off of the existing western hills fire entirely correct okay okay thank you um commissioners anything else for eric i have nothing I have nothing. Thank okay. you. Thank you. Thank you, County Engineer, for joining us. It's always a pleasure. Uh, thanks for bringing us up to date on these really important infrastructure projects. Thank you. Appreciate your time. Thank you. All right. Uh, the third item on the agenda is the policy agenda. You all should have received a draft version of the 21-22 policy agenda that will help guide the budget discussions that are sh coming shortly from the administration. And so um, I'm looking forward to comments or questions or additions or deletions to wh what you all have. Um, I do wanna run through it just really high level um, just to bring everybody in the loop here. So this policy agenda builds really on previous policy agendas, adds a little bit, uh, but really it, it's one of the building blocks uh, as we continue to invest in certain things, um, this is a continuation of what I see as a, a significant county investment in different areas. And so the first one talks about budget stabilization, maintaining economic development investments uh, so that we are well positioned for economic recovery. So this talks about some of the things that we've done in the past uh, to stabilize the budget, to make sure that the county has the resources that it needs to do the very important work that we do for the community, primarily through safety um, and keeping families.
um, in, you know, stable, you know, helping kids, helping families thrive in our community. And so that's part of what we're talking about in the very beginning when it comes to budget stabilization. You can see some of the investments are about critical basic services, capital improvements that have been long delayed, support for the revitalization of Hamilton County entering suburbs. So this is economic development. Some of the investments that we have uh, in the tour- tourism industry infrastructure, um, some of the, the garages are part of that. And that's a little bit outside the general fund, but still an important priority. And then new investments in transportation infrastructure, which we just heard about, 911 and criminal justice reforms. So it also reminds us of some of the things we have done, including making sure our employees are making at least $15 an hour, making sure we've got pay equity at the county, uh, and making sure that our workforce is uh, robust and capable of doing the work that is so important to the citizens. So that's the kind of the first section. Second one goes into building a better justice system through diversion and reentry. So we've done a lot in this space, as you know. Um, we talk about the LEAD program, the pre-arrest diversion, the CASC, which is diversion once someone hits the court system, and then the reentry program. If you do end up in the Justice Center, uh, the reentry program to try to give you the supports as you move back into the community. So um, obviously our resolution declaring racism a public health crisis plays into this as well. Um, and then we move into the, the next bullet, which is integrating equity and inclusion into all county operations. So that talks obviously about the resolution, uh, the, the training that the sheriff is in partnership with us on, the expansion of the economic inclusion and equity council, and also the disparity study that we are launching. And I know um, all of it, and at, per Jeff's reports to us, every week we know that that work is underway and it's 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 very exciting that we're moving on this stuff i mean it really is Mm -hmm. and and we're moving pretty quickly from my view so um that that piece is really exciting um then we talk about uh transportation infrastructure and the smooth transition to sorta we talked about sorta last week um that is all going well um and we will soon have a new board appointed with a lot of continuity from the old board and then we just talked about all the infrastructure priorities including the western hills viaduct the next one talks about continuing partnerships to revitalize communities so this is about uh, some of our cdbg dollars the federal dollars that we get that we can then distribute to the neighborhoods for economic development it also talks about the county's role in this partnership when it comes to some of these developments, whether it is you know a land acquisition issue or whether it is a grant or or whatever it is, um, what we can do in partnership with these local jurisdictions to help uh, revitalize those communities. And so we've listed out a couple of examples, including the Montgomery Gateway, the Silverton Town Hall, and the Evendale Aero Hub, um, as examples of what we've done in the past. The next bullet is about investing in a thriving workforce to drive the recovery. And I've already talked about that a little bit, about making sure that we have a well-paid workforce um, that have the appropriate training to do the work. Uh, And this talks also about something that is fairly new, which is a family leave policy, the FMLA. So I'm looking forward to the administration's reaction to the potential of putting a, a very robust FMLA policy in place to help our employees um, as they they work through some of these um, leave leave issues uh, that they're dealing with. The next one talks about helping all families thrive and protecting vulnerable populations. This talks a lot about um, the levies, which again are outside of the general fund, but the seven levies that are run by this county are critically important to the communities they serve. And in the past, from my experience, uh, of the seven, we've only gone to the voters with a recommendation to increase two. Those have been for seniors to keep seniors in their homes and for children. Um, And a lot of the work is running through JFS, trying to keep families stable, kids safe at home and uh, promote kinship care and some of the other things we've done. So I, I, again, super important work outside Mm -hmm. the general fund, but I think it's worth noting in a policy document like this one. The next is about 
MSD, one of our favorite, favorite topics, um, improving the governance there and our renewed commitment to making um, changes to that structure that we work in collaboration with the city on, uh, recognizing that one of our top priorities is keeping rates down as we uh, protect the assets and move on the consent decree mandate, but also recognizing that the city's pension sh system and their workforce is critically important to them. And so continuing to try to work through this and come up with a structure that we can all agree to. Um, the next item talks about affordable housing. I know all three of us share the desire to be partners in creating more affordable or workforce housing in the county. And so this is once again, an acknowledgement of that. If, you know, I, we had some dollars in our last budget to respond to this and COVID wiped some of this stuff out. And that is true in many cases of, of what we've been talking about, but uh, hopefully we will have um, a more optimistic projection for the next year and we can more aggressively move forward in this space to get in um, to, to work with our partners on affordable housing the next one talks about the county fair we've already had this conversation about the task force and the recommendations and we look forward to continuing to work with the agricultural society to move on some of those recommendations to make make sure that the fair is all that it can be and to bolster up what's happening in the carthage community in um, the county the next one talks about citizen-led initiatives and then uh, board of county commissioner initiatives um, and citizen-led initiatives so they include the um, hamilton county arc so this used to be the heroin coalition it is now the addiction response coalition we continue to do the work in a collaborative way with prevention treatment law enforcement public health faith community business community um, to try to get people into long-term recovery in this community it has been extremely challenging during covid to do this work but we are still meeting we are still sharing information and trying to make a difference in the lives of those that are struggling in this community the next one is oral health and uh commissioner parts i'm going to leave that for your conversation uh infant mortality also uh was um a creature of commissioner todd portoon and so i'll leave that to you commissioner parks the the one at the end of the page there is the commission on women and girls so we continue to meet on a monthly basis as that commission is still talking about um, access to period products in schools pay equity uh, providing response for victims of domestic violence um, and really trying to address the needs of women and girls, particularly as we go through this pandemic and understand what impacts there are, negative impacts to women and girls, especially related to COVID-19. And they are, there are a lot. Uh, and so we are thinking through some of that to make sure that the work is relevant. And then the last one, Commissioner Summer Dumas is yours, and that's the uh, Boys to Men Initiative. So. I'm gonna leave it there. Uh, it gives you an overview of the policy document that you all have received. Um, so looking again forward to your reaction to it, I think um, we're hoping to get that by the end of the week, just so we can get something over to the administration. But this has been a, an interesting exercise and really a reminder about where we have been and what we are building on. And so I, it, it really has been an exercise uh, that was a pleasure to to partake in and um, try to think through not only how we build, but how we do things in a different proactive way here moving forward related to our budget. So with that, I'm going to leave it and um, ask, please, for comments uh, from the county commissioners. So Commissioner Summero Dumas. Thank you, Madam President. I just want to say in general, it was just the overview was excellent. Um, it was so inclusive and just so well written and simply enough where even um, all of our constituents can understand where we were and where we're going. So I just really enjoyed reading it. Um, just had a couple comments that I'll be sending to you. Um, uh, as Should I do that now or you want me to put that in, in writing? I'm going to ask you to do both. Okay. So that we have it in writing. Thank sure. you. Sure. Um, just the leading, um, the leading um, paragraph that we started with, just wondering if we could possibly include the fact that the federal funding, uh, we didn't mention any of the federal funding that came in that allowed us to sustain some of those programs. So I think it would be great if we could just include that we, that we did get some help from the federal government. Okay. And um, 
also uh, the first section where you talked about the budget and the budget stabilization, I think I uh, would like to include, if we could, the fact that the sales tax that was passed that was not uh, as popular with some people, uh, but without that sales tax that we passed, uh, we would not be in such good a shape as we are now financially, knowing that we're still not where we want to be, but that that sale without passing that we would have been in deeper trouble. Mm -hmm. um, and just a couple other things, Madam President, because it was so well written. Um, and it shows all the things that we've been working hard to do in these uh, in this last year. Um, uh, improving the MSD governance. Um, so I just was thinking that possibly that first sentence we might want to take out because that whole paragraph explains what we're trying to do, which is try to add on some new governance and just trying to stay positive. And you might, uh, we might want to consider taking that first sentence out um, and leave all the rest in. And then I think finally, uh, improving the Hamilton County Fair, uh, just wondering if we could put something in there that, yeah, we're going to, of course, listen to the recommendations of the agricultural uh, uh, group and the task force, but to continue to assess the utilization of 30 plus acres of land. Um, I know they had indicated they um, needed all of it for parking, but I do know that there are areas across the street that could possibly be used for parking. So just if we could possibly include the fact that um, possibly all of it doesn't need to be used for the Hamlin County Fair, we might could uh, use another part of it for some other sort of development. Um, and I think lastly, um, the Boys and Men Initiative, I will explain, expand a little bit more on that as it relates to uh, what our goals are. You, you included that, but our inability to have that upfront and personal initial contact with those uh, boys and men, I think really would have um, not given that program what it needed. So we're going to have to think outside of the box because we don't know when this virus will end or slow down. Um, how we're going to do that up close, uh, and it, it will certainly probably be virtual, but um, because of the virus, it was not able to, to start, but we definitely have a commitment to start it uh, next year in some sort of way, but not the way we want it to. So those were the only comments that I had, um, Madam President, I will send you uh, the summary of those. Great, we'll look forward to that. Thank you, uh -huh. mm -hmm. Commissioner Parks. Um, thank you, Madam President. Uh, this is really well laid out. And, and it also reminds us of the work that has been laid out, that, that we have layered on top of it in order to accomplish uh, the, you know, the agenda that you and Todd laid out when you first came in. Um, mm. First of all, we were in really good shape at the beginning of this year, and then COVID happened. Um, and, and, you know, and so the work that was done, we would have been in worse shape if, if it hadn't been for that. Um, I really like building a better justice system through a diversion and reentry. That's just so awesome. And, what, what, what I really like about the work that's done is that it, it all kind of fits together like a puzzle. Um, and the, okay, so the part that I was gonna add was um, the, the work and the funding that we're doing for the, um, the, the uh, declaration about racism, but you have it in here. Mm -hmm. and so, so that's awesome. Feel free to make adjustments, Commissioner. Okay. Okay. Um, and the line, you know, the fact that we're going to work to eliminate racism in all forms is so awesome. That that's so progressive and, and mature. So thank you, Madam President. Mm -hmm. Um. Oh, sorta. 
this is good, you know, where we get eight board members and the city's going to get five. So I, I, I took a look at this and all of them expired the first of the year, right? Yeah, we asked all of the current board members to offer a letter of res resignation effective the end of the year. And it will be up to the city and the county to appoint all of the new members. But the understanding is that those that would like to continue to serve, uh, if we so choose, will be reappointed. And then the county will have some additional appointments to make because our number has increased. Okay. That's good stuff. Working on that right now that remember the 30-day um, application period is open right now. Okay. Yeah, 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 that's ready. Um, and the uh, the revitalization of neighborhoods. You know, I, I had um, an opportunity to uh, speak with the Port Authority about uh, what would, if I had a magic wand, what would I wish for neighborhoods? And this is a step, you know, in the right direction of what I would do if I had a magic wand, you know, for them to be, um, you know, for neighborhoods to be sustainable, mm -hmm. for them to be walkable, for there to be businesses that people can go to, you know, uh, uh, butcher shops, bakeries, uh, you know, Silverton is a very good um, example of it. And what is happening in, um, is it one? No, in um, Bon Hill. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And the uh, thriving workforce. Um, oh, yeah. With the... Uh, yeah, I, I thought that this was really interesting. Um, continue and expand its policy. for the, um, you know, the benefits agreements on major construction projects. You know, the, the way that we assess them, the work that gets done in Hamilton County is done by the citizens of Hamilton County. If the supplies can come from Hamilton County, if we can warehouse, you know, it's just in order to revitalize us and to, to keep the money circulating. Opposed mm -hmm. to years ago, we would have so many workers from out of state. So we were actually paying uh, contracts and that kind of stuff, and the money was leaving our region. So, so that's what's different about this and what I like about it. The Family Leave Act, that, that makes sense. Um, the the kinship care. Mm -hmm. Um, I th th I think that that's so important. It's so important. Instead of um, incentivizing the separation of families, you actually give a little bit of help so that the kids can stay in there, can stay in the family, and those kind of, you know, it it trickles down. It lessens the trauma for the children and for the family. So uh, I'm, I'm really proud of that, mm -hmm. of, of their kinship care, that, um, that, that you all had the foresight to do that. I think it's wonderful. MSD governance and develop a strategic approach for affordable housing. You know, it, it kind of, it breaks my heart to see that there, you know, <laughs> we have 40,000 more people that, that need affordable housing than, than what we have. Boy, boy, <laughs> you know, that's, and, and, and my feeling is, uh, you know, not everybody is going to be rich. Not everybody is going to make $80,000, you know? 
it's it's just the way that it is and so um you know in and, and so and in the measure of the leadership in a community is the way that we treat the least among us and so um i'm, I'm so i'm proud to know that we work to address those kind of issues and and i just pray that we can the fair hope we get that thing together you know but <laughs> the, <laughs> the um the task force is is uh is on key and and, and i'm really looking forward to that uh, working out the fact that and and I, I also know that the community appreciates the way that we invite them in to lead initiatives. So that's that's awesome. You know, you've got ARC, Oral Health Coalition. Um, this is a group of people, they do so much. There's such experts. You know, earlier this year, we engaged Medicare in Columbus, and they have actually listen to us and um and put into effect the suggestions that our coalition has uh given to them and so we're we're proud of the fact that uh i'm proud of the expertise of the relationships that have been built and the way that um medicare is changing to patient uh, led, you know, where, where the patient is the most important ingredient there. Infant mortality, you know, things uh, keep getting, Im uh, improvement is on the way. Um, like Ryan says, one is too many. Um, so we're, we're working on that. And that will do it. Thank you. Okay. okay, great. Thank you. So Commissioner um, Parks, if you have um, any suggestions for additions, please let us know uh, by way of um, an email and we'll make sure that if you want to expand on anything, um, we'll include that. Okay, I'll, I'll take, um, I, I, I actually, I believe that you have included everything that I would be interested in, but um, I'll do that. Thank okay, you. Okay, great, thank you both. Madam yes. President, just a yeah. comment. Um, for those that are watching, the policy agenda um, is done by the president of the commission, as I said earlier, did a fantastic job pulling together what our goals and objectives were. And I just, I heard earlier that there were two commissioners that were involved in the development of all these goals. I just wanna make it clear, um, having been here two years, um, that some of those goals were developed since I've been here. The other ones were previous goals, like the Cradle Cincinnati and things like that. But since only two commissioners were mentioned, I want to make it clear that I also initiated and implemented and created some of those goals were, that were in this uh, pro, in this agenda. So I wanted to make that very clear. Thank you. Yeah, well, and when I talk about building on past progress, uh, the uh, infant mortality way precedes me on mm -hmm. the board. So that was Todd and... I guess, uh, Greg Hartman, Chris Monzel, uh, mm -hmm. Dennis Dieters. So, uh, yeah, many, many of the, the um, ARC also was in place before I got here. Sure. So we are building on and standing on the shoulders, really, of many, many commissioners that Absolutely. preceded us and included us. Mm -hmm. uh, so point Very taken. Good. But, yeah, it's, it's just mm -hmm. a, a way to build on some of the progress the county has made over the last few mm -hmm. years. Thank you. Thank you. Um, all right. Very good. Well, thank you for that. And we'll look forward to comments again. And you re mentioned that the process is um, document originates with the president's office. Other commissioners um, get a chance to discuss, respond, add, delete. Uh, eventually we get to a final, which will be provided to both offices. And then we agree to something, get it to the administration. Um, and as they work on the budget, which is happening right now, they take a look at the policy document and make sure that we are on target uh, as the policy relates to the dollars being uh, spent through the budget. So, so much of it's pre-prescribed. Uh, however, some of it's not. And so, uh, you know, we do, we do have some influence through this document to make sure that what we know is best for the county is included by way of the budget. So 
Thank you both. Mm -hmm. um, so the next item uh, relates to capital improvements and energy conservation projects. I can see that Ralph Linney has joined us and Jeff Aludo is also uh, going to talk about this. So Jeff, I will turn it over to you first. Thank you, Madam President. I'll be very brief here, um, but just want to give a little bit of an overview on um, on, on this um, uh, type of project that Ralph is getting ready to uh, to detail to the board. So going back, uh, it's probably what Ralph now ten years or so ago, um, coming out of the of the recession, or really in the heart of the recession, uh, the county, uh, from a, um, uh, a a a fiscal perspective was not in the best condition at that point in time, yet we still had a significant amount of deferred capital maintenance that we had to accomplish as we do today. We have over $300 million in, uh, in deferred capital maintenance um, over the next 10 years uh, in our facilities. We were in a similar, if not worse position um, back then. And so we had to be very creative in terms of how we went about um, uh, uh, making it through that list of, of deferred maintenance projects. So um, we, uh, we work, uh, the administration worked with county facilities and we began investing in what's called um, energy, um, energy performance contracting. And at the time back in uh, 2010, 2011, this was a relatively new concept, um, but essentially it's a form of design build uh, contracting uh, whereby uh, the capital improvements uh, that are invested in are really paid for, um, or they're typically debt financed and paid for based upon the energy the, the energy cost reductions that come from the project. So um, if you put in uh, an energy conservation measure that ultimately reduces your energy spend, uh, you're able to then finance that based upon that in those, uh, those dollars that are then freed up. So you're typically not saving money um, but you are, well, you, the savings that you do produce are then used to, uh, to finance the project. So at the end of the day, you are level in terms of your overall cost, um, but you're able to afford the capital improvements that you were otherwise unable to afford. And we had um, a significant uh, slate of capital projects. Um, and as Ralph will go through, we've been through multiple phases now uh, of performance contracting. It's really worked very well uh, for the county and what Ralph wants to uh, provide to the board today is our recommendation on the next slate of these. And there's a, a little bit of a, a new dynamic in here and that as we continue to move down the course, a lot of the really high ROI energy projects, uh, Ralph and his team have, have already uh, taken off the table. So we're actually looking to put a little bit of cash into the uh, slate of projects that Ralph is gonna show to you today. These these are this cash would be to fund projects that are already uh, included in our uh, earmark for high priority capital projects throughout the county. So what Ralph is going to show you is a mix of projects that are both energy conservation projects and some other projects that we were already prepared to move forward on. We're going to package those together and recommend doing those as one slate of projects in a way that is that aside from the cash that we would put out initially, um, in the long term, uh, cost neutral to the county. Uh, so with that, Ralph, I'm going to turn it over to you to walk through a little bit of the history on what we've done in the past and where we look to go in the future. All righty. Uh, Bridget, can you bring up the slideshow for me? All right. Uh, basically, we're starting a project. Uh, I have two other people who are very heavily involved in this project. That'll be Burt Watts and uh, Tony Montre and uh, Diane will be taking care of the financing until, uh, well, keeping track of the dollars until she retires. Uh, next one. Uh, Amoresco is our partner in this. They've been a partner with us uh, for several, for the last 10 to 12 years. Uh, just to give you an idea of their background, maybe been around since the year 2000. They are really interested or involved in energy projects. They have high bonding capacity. Uh, they have done six phases with the county. Three of these phases were uh, with the county facilities department. Uh, their team is local. Uh, their vendors, their subcontractors, their consultants they use are also local from the Cincinnati area. Next one, please. How we got there here. Uh, 
back in 2019 in mid-year, we I talked to Jeff and uh, Holly, and we decided to put a RFQ out for energy ener, energy grade audit of our existing buildings. Uh, we had two firms respond. Uh, we chose Amarasco based on their previous experience and their knowledge of our buildings. Uh, agreement was signed earlier in this year, and they conducted an uh, energy grade audit. They with, met with me, Tony, Bert, and our building managers, and went through what we have done in the past, what projects we knew we need to do in the future, and if there was any energy savings with it. Uh, they basically put together a, a laundry list. We sat down with them and went through and say, okay, what is the real savings that comes out of this? Does it make sense to do it? Uh, is the uh, replacement of some of the uh, building components and systems needed now, or could they be delayed for the to the future? Several meetings we've had with them, and we finally came up with a final list of projects. Uh, we met several times with uh, county administration, uh, with John Brugan uh, and Jeff, and uh, with the team from Amoresco and finally zeroed in on what made sense that we should do. And that'll be shown in a few slides in a minute. Uh, the next steps that needs to happen is determining how we're going to fund this. So we've been working with the budget department and John Bruggen, I think has a very good plan in place. I hope so, because I want to uh, spend the money and get the projects done. Uh, the contract basically has been prepared as uh, basically an energy contract that requires us to the savings to pay for what they do. It's been reviewed. It will then be reviewed by the prosecutor's office. Uh, Bert Watts is leading that effort with the prosecutor's office. Uh, we hope to submit this contract to the board uh, in sometime in November and be able by the end of November to uh, kick this project off with the idea that we can get it uh, completed within three years. We have one part of the project uh, that takes a lot of time and I'll talk a little bit about that before we get to it. Uh, next slide. Uh, what this is just a little bit of history in phase one uh, back in 2011. These were the projects that we did uh, in the buildings that are noted. Uh, they were all uh, things that was obviously needed to be done and had a high savings. Uh, as you can see, uh, it was a $7.4 million project and it is basically paid for itself. In fact, our energy savings has been even higher than what we uh, anticipated. Next one, phase two. Phase two was basically the courthouse justice center, 800 Broadway. We moved into those buildings. Uh, that, those projects cost about 10.6 million. Uh, again, uh, the energy savings was over 700,000 and uh, they have actually paid for these projects as uh, they've been around, as you can see, for approximately eight years. And uh, we've been very pleased. Uh, again, they were some major and include here, you can see we did a solar project uh, and also did one on the courthouse along with the one at the uh, Justice Center. Phase uh, three, basically was the outlying buildings. Uh, not as much there because they are smaller buildings. The energy savings impact was not as high, uh, but we did uh, make some improvements. Again, uh, the savings is there. Uh, we are very pleased. Uh, phase four, uh, the next slide, uh, was a follow-up done. Uh, Joe Fellenkamp and uh, John Bruggen and uh, Jeff looked at what was needed to be done at Paul Brown Stadium. And that project was uh, run under Joe Fellow Camp. And as you can see, uh, many things were done down there to improve it, uh, the garages at Great American Ballpark. And then also there was a phase five uh, that also was done at Great American Ballpark and Paul Brown Stadium. And that was 11.6. Uh, Again, that was our Joe Fellow Camp's uh, responsibilities and it was very successful, as I understand. Now, the new phase, uh, which will be phase six, well, this is the total dollar savings from all the phases uh, that was shown and the value. Total value has been over uh, 40, uh, almost $48 million. Uh, and that's all been paid for with the energy savings and savings uh, with uh, operation costs, which would be cost of materials not being having to replace them and reduction in uh, labor costs. 
Uh, phase six is what we are proposing to be done. Uh, as you can see, it basically covers all our buildings. Uh, main thing that we're looking at doing is LED lighting and uh, lighting controls. Uh, 10 years ago, LED was brand new. There was a lot of suppliers. There was a lot of promises made, never change your lights for 20, 30 years, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, we chose to avoid that, and I'm glad we did. There's been some problems. They've been solved. The suppliers has been shaken out over the years, and we feel comfortable that uh, now is the time to go in and, and change the lighting, and uh, it will definitely is the biggest uh, cost saving in this. We also want to go back and look at our HVAC controls, make some necessary changes. The technology has changed. Uh, since then has improved greatly. We feel that uh, we can improve the airflow of the buildings, which is obviously critical dealing with this virus, uh, as well as uh, improve efficiency in our usage of energy. Uh, we got a few things over at the, the top Rotoon Center that needs to be replaced, upgraded. One of them that obviously is going to be paid for by the energy savings of the other projects is to uh, replace the fire alarm system uh, in, that, in that facility. Uh, that's definitely is needed as parts has become obsolete. We go down to the Justice Center. Uh, this is the long project. There'll be three to three and a half years is to replace all uh, and update all eight elevators uh, in both uh, the North Building and the South Building. Uh, nine elevators, excuse me, there is um, freight elevator also. Same way, uh, the boilers have not been replaced in 30 plus years. That would be included as well as we looked at in the detention centers, getting close to uh, 20 plus years old and replacing the chillers there. And the boilers and chillers, there will be some energy savings. As uh, you can see on the side there, that the total cost of this project is about $14.1 million. Uh, the total annual savings is estimated to be about $384,000 a year and over a 20 year period, this project basically pays for itself. And next slide, any questions? I do have Bert Watts available uh, for some detailed questions on the systems and uh, I'm sure uh, Mr. Ludo or Mr. Brugge could answer some questions if needed in the financial side of it. And, and on that note, Ralph, just uh, just real quickly, I think John is on as well. So John uh, um, has done a lot of work on the financing aspect of this, but you got roughly a $14 million project of the of the projects um, in the broader program that Ralph mentioned. Um, there is a lot of overlap with uh, what we had previously seen as uh, Ralph, the county facilities highest priority projects. So we are allocating uh, around six million dollars of cash from the ten million dollar earmark that we had um, towards those projects to get those done that brings the overall cost of the project uh, down to roughly uh, eight million with an annual um, average debt service cost of around five hundred thousand um, dollars annually uh, with around four hundred thousand in annual energy savings so as ralph said um, in year one the project is close to paying for itself we also have um, our energy costs are going to inflate um, over over the years. So we actually, on an annual basis, will be saving a little bit more based upon uh, the inflation of those costs over time. So um, as we do the numbers across the board, the project, ultimate, as Ralph said, ultimately pays for itself. Um, in the early years, uh, we're probably uh, just short on an annual cash flow perspective, but still uh, getting a huge amount of capital projects done uh, with some cash that we had already pre-programmed for this and then on top of that around uh, 100,000 or so in annual operating cost expenses as it relates to paying for the financing costs of, of that and those are all things that we're building into the uh, uh, assuming the board um, authorizes uh, uh, us to move forward and approves the contract that will be built into the uh, recommended budget that we'll, the board will be seeing in late October early Well, the only other thing I forgot to mention is there will be a reduction in uh, usage of electricity and natural gas, which uh, works toward our continuing uh, green planet approach to reducing fossil fuels emissions into uh, the air. 
And, and Madam President, you are muted. Oh, thank you, Jeff. I was going on and on there. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't. Um, so, yeah, thanks to Jeff. Thanks to Ralph. Um, yeah, I think, Ralph, you just hit on it. The most exciting part of this is, in addition to all the improvements that are going to be done to make sure that we're operating at full tilt, uh, these are all things that are green and good for the environment. And that is a direction that I know we want to go in. And so thank you for being part of that and bringing this to to, to us. Uh, I have one question about the queue of projects and I, I'm curious to know about kind of whatever rating system you use to make sure that you are addressing the issues that are, you know, front and center and then how do other projects get in the queue and I guess the ultimate question is how many more projects are in the queue um, as you think through capital improvements for all these county facilities. Well, presently what we do is we have a top 10 list that we need uh, money for yesterday uh, to be taken care of uh, due to obsolescence. And we picked uh, probably uh, several of those uh, was picked up out of this. Uh, we basically keep track for a five year and a 20 year list of projects needed by building based on priority, where there is a code issue, safety issue, obsolescence, uh, need for improvement in the environment. Uh, we have a, a long list that we use to category and based on that, uh, how long the item has been around, you know, it should uh, last for 10 years, 15 years, 20 years. So all that is built into a 20 year plan. And then we evaluate that every time we do a project, we go back and re uh, stack the, uh, the projects. Uh, the biggest thing we're running into now is parts becoming obsolete, uh, like the fire alarm system or the top rotune center. Uh, we're able to procure a few uh, elevators. Uh, we are finding out that parts are being come obsolete, which means they have to be remanufactured or rebuilt, which means that the elevator is down for maybe three weeks, four weeks or a month till the part is shipped out and shipped back because they're not keeping them on the shelves. And that's one of the problems we got with the elevators at the Justice Center uh, that's occurring right now. Madam and President, you, I would just tag well, on to can, can I just ask a question about the elevators at the Todd B. Portoon Center for County <laughs> Government? Because I feel like they're <laughs> quite a bit. And, I, you know, we're on the sixth floor here. So <laughs> I'm just curious, I, you know, because I, I know the top 10 list. No, it's been an ongoing issue at the Justice Center, and it's a safety issue at the Justice Center, and so it needs to be addressed. That's kind of what I'm talking about when we talk about this queue and the priorities and how often they're evaluated. So you, you're saying they're evaluated fairly frequently to make sure that we are addressing the highest priority issues, but there are many, many projects, I guess, still waiting in the queue. Yes, we, we keep it up to date. I keep it uh, sent to Holly and Jeff and, and John on my weekly report, listing where we're at in our top 10. And then as a project is completed, uh, we reshuffle. Uh, and yes, one of the top projects is the elevator in the uh -huh. top rotoon center. And as, soon as, as soon as funding is provided, I'll be more than <laughs> happy to upgrade it. Yeah, I hear one, you, thank one, you, Ralph. One of the uh, things that we wanted to do in this particular project, so. When the project was initially scoped, uh, Amoresco had a, it was a much broader project. And uh, Ralph, I forget how many projects um, were in it, um, but it, it, I believe at the time it, it included other projects that were things that we want to do, um, but at the same time, weren't gonna produce as much energy savings. Mm -hmm. So we were left with a project that may have cost us in debt service nine hundred thousand dollars but the energy savings were only four hundred thousand so the direction that we gave to amoresco was go back to the drawing board and try to wean down the project as much as possible so that we we're only doing the the highest and en uh, energy saving projects and we could then add some cash to it to fulfill uh, and accomplish some of the highest what ralph uh, and county facilities believe are the highest priority projects that we have so at the end of the day we're spending a prudent amount of cash. We still have some cash left in that uh, in that uh, fund, in that earmark that we can spend 
um, and then we can prioritize later. But at the same time, the project as a whole on an annual basis will be roughly neutral. Okay. John, uh, I, I, John jumped on as well. Uh, and I want to make sure uh, give the opportunity for John to provide any context here as well. Anything you wanted to add, John? Well, just to, to Ralph's point on that top 10 list is we are addressing, I believe it's about four of the top 10 items via the Amoresco project. But we have intentionally scaled the cash that we'll put into the Amoresco project to leave enough in our earmark to address the other six. Hmm. Um, so you, if, if the commissioners so wish, um, we've got about another 1.8, 1.9 million in that earmark that will address the other top 10 items um, in the in facilities list, including the elevator replacement at the Todd B. Fortune Center. Mm. And, and that would be coming forward as a capital budget recommendation outside of this particular project. Right, okay. okay. Great. Thank Great. you. All right, commissioners, co comments, questions. Yeah, thank you, Madam President. You asked the one I was going to ask about the elevators at the Topper Tune Center. <laughs> but I'm just inquisitive, uh, Ralph, as I looked through your slides and I was wondering what the O and M savings were, and you mentioned that was operational savings. But was what was interesting to me as you flashed through phase four, um, the O and M savings were almost exactly what the energy savings were versus the other phases were like only 10% O and O and M savings. So do you have an idea of why the savings in the O and M was so great uh, in phase four versus all those other ones? No, I don't. Since, since I, I not responsible for Paul Brown stadium, that was Joe fellow caps. Yeah, yeah we could, we can check into that and, and get you a formal answer, but typically the O and M savings relate to uh, the ability to reduce service contracts associated mm -hmm. with a, a certain capital improvement. So mm -hmm. depending upon which item you're making a fix to, if it's something that then you can reduce on an old piece of equipment, your your preventive maintenance scheduled visits from once a month to mm -hmm. two times a year because you've got a, a brand new piece of equipment, um, that can lead to some more operational savings. That's typically what we see, part replacement as mm -hmm. well. Uh, that's typically what we see, but we can follow up and find out exactly what, yeah. the, what uh, the the issue was with PBS. And um, it's a great issue. It's something good to see. But Jeff, I was wondering, could that also mean that we used some of our staff versus going outside to get some of the the work done? It could. It could be from time. Mm -hmm. It could be that um, that we don't need anymore to contract out mm -hmm. or something. But the the type of uh, preventive maintenance work that's needed is something that mm -hmm. our staff can do internally, mm -hmm. and it's not okay. requiring some specialized source of expertise to come in and do it. That's possible mm -hmm. as well. Okay. All right. Thanks. You're welcome. Thanks, Ralph. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Mr. Park? I have no questions. Thank you, Ralph. Yeah. Thanks for the presentation, Ralph. We've got a lot of infrastructure going on today, whether it's roads, <laughs> bridges, or buildings. We're all yeah. infrastructure. Yeah. Um, thanks, Ralph. Thanks for all the work you're doing. It's it's really mm -hmm. impressive, and it's really forward thinking. All this energy efficient, green kind of uh, initiative that you have been working on, I know for many years. So thanks again for the work. Thanks to your team, and we're really excited about this mm -hmm. project in particular. So, uh, so will this come before us then, Jeff? Yeah. So Ralph, the the contract is. Uh, have, have we had it approved by the prosecutor? Is it wait? Is it just waiting for it action? Where are we with our contract right now? Uh, it still needs to be presented, and we got to tie down the final financial numbers uh, with John Brugan because they have to be spelled out since this is basically a design build uh, contract. Uh, so that. Yep. It'll be coming forward to the board within, a, uh, I would imagine, a couple of weeks here. Yes, Amores mm -hmm. is ready right now. If they could, to submit mm -hmm. to us. Okay. Thanks, John. John, is that correct, John? <laughs> okay. Yes, I'll be working with my staff who will be working with Ralph, and we'll get these through to you in a few weeks. Okay, great, great. Thank you. Thank you all. All right, um, that concludes our agenda. Uh, is there anything else to come before the commission? I have nothing. Um, other than I want to talk about the crime lab okay. this morning that we went to. Commissioner Driehaus talked about it. Um, first thing off, it is just a wonderful place. You know, it's it's the coroner's place. Um, uh, and it's just so, uh, such an improvement over what she has to work with now. And touring it, 
what I kept thinking about was how happy Todd Platoon would be to see what has been done. Um, it's going to be a revenue generating um, entity. It's state of the art. There's nothing else like it in the country. So I'm, I'm just excited. I can't wait until it's open. And, um, and, and I'm just really proud of the work that's been done. Mm -hmm. That's all. Thank you. Uh, Madam President, if, if I may um, add on about uh, Monday was Indigenous Peoples Day. And so uh, we don't meet on Monday. So I would like to bring forth a proclamation, at least on Thursday, to acknowledge that we're aware of their uh, special holiday. So I'd like to do that on Thursday. Okay. Uh, let me backtrack a little bit to the um, coroner's office. So when we have the anticipated ribbon cutting, which I heard uh, the coroner say that would be in February, which is great and soon, uh, we'll make sure that all the previous commissioners that had a, a role to play here, and there are many, are invited to that ceremony. So, so note to self, Jeff and Jackie and Bridget, that uh, because it, this this has been a collected effort, collective effort mm -hmm. from all of us. And so I think it will be important. And, and Commissioner Parks, you will, you are on the list. So even though you are, <laughs> I will be a former. That's right. You, you'll be a former. How about that? Ah, um, Madam, anyway. Madam President, if, if I could just, just really quick, I'm sorry to interrupt, but um, just, just on that note, because as we were out there uh, this morning, uh, it is a, a fantastic facility. It is state of the art. And I just want to, and you, you mentioned uh, the historic aspect of this and going back, this has gone over multiple boards of, of mm -hmm. commissioners over the years. Um, as you said, multiple commissioners have had their hand in shaping this. And the reason was because of uh, the, the, the extremely urgent and important link uh, that the mm -hmm. coroner's office and the crime lab play in the criminal justice system and on mm -hmm. uh, from the coroner's office perspective the the closure of death cases uh, in the county in a way that that uh, is responsive to the dignity of human life which we all want to make sure that that we are and on the crime lab side of things uh, the ability to ensure that the flow of justice uh, through our system in the courts and in the justice center are not slowed down mm -hmm. um, by the need to uh, to test evidence and to and to analyze um, uh, different uh, samples and things that the, that the, the court needs uh, in order to dispose of, of, of active cases quickly and get people through the system so that you either don't have um, guilty people who uh, aren't where they should be quicker or that you don't have innocent people um, in, in the court system and in the justice center longer than absolutely need be. So the board recognized that critical link to the uh, mm -hmm. of, the, of the crime lab to our local justice system and said, we are putting this as our top priority from the capital perspective and public safety. And we want a state-of-the-art facility that is conducive to um, a, an efficient justice system here locally. And we want you administration to do it in a way that does not raise our debt service level any more than it already is. Mm -hmm. And so we were fortuitous at the time to have some debt service dropping off because we were retiring debt uh, on some buildings and we were able to layer this in uh, in such a way that our overall debt profile has not risen um, uh, because of this particular facility. So we're, right. we're building a state of art, state of the art facility on budget uh, and in a way conducive with uh, the overall uh, financial sustainability of the county. It's a great story. And I just want to thank this board for its continued policy guidance on it as well as past boards for their, their direction. Mm -hmm. yeah. That is so awesome. Mm -hmm. Thanks for that, Jeff. That is so awesome. Well, on time and on budget. On, budget. on mm -hmm. time, on budget, with a community benefits agreement to ensure local jobs. Mm. Yes. Uh, it really is a, a, a good, it's great. A great message. And, and the other piece too is about, uh, related to the addiction crisis in our community and getting uh, a better understanding as uh, people struggle and overdose, uh, what drugs are in the community, how we need to respond to that. So it is a mm -hmm. multi-layered uh, facility with, it's so important to all the work we do. So thanks, thanks yeah. for the overview, Jeff. Yeah, yeah this, this one's got a history. So it's gonna be a long list of county commissioners 
former and present uh, invited, but that'll be exciting. It'll be fun to see everybody. Right. So, all right, well, very good. Well, if there's nothing else to come before the board, I'm gonna move that we adjourn. Second. Commissioner Driehaus? Yes. Commissioner Samar Dumas? Yes. Commissioner Parks? Yes. Thank you. Thank you.